Hello everybody, thank you for watching HM Studio. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to do exterior lighting with Corona Renderer. You're going to learn how to use Corona Sun and Sky, HDRI, how to add some artificial lights into the scene, and also how to use the light mixer in order to extract many modes out of only one render. But before we start, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. Without any further ado, let's move over to 3ds Max and start the project. Alright, I've chosen this scene for this tutorial and I've already taught you how to illuminate this scene with V-Ray and the link to that video will appear on the right top side of the screen right now if you want to check that one out. We're going to start with the sun and sky and later on we'll use an HDRI for the dusk mode. As I told you in almost all of my tutorials, the first thing you want to do is to enable the override material and assign a simple corona material to that. Then you need to exclude the light and glass material from the override material from here. Now let's go to the top view and start by adding the corona sun into the scene. The position of the corona sun in the scene is not really important because that will not make any difference. So I'm going to create the sun right here and let's move it up in the front view. The next step is to add the corona sky into the environment slot by clicking on this button over here. As you can see the viewport background has been changed. If you want to change it back to the default gradient color, all you have to do is to press Alt and B choose one of these options and apply it to all active layout tabs. Alright, I'm just gonna disable the noise during render since it makes it a bit blurry and I don't really like that and then we can start the interactive rendering to see what we got so far. As you can see the whole image is overexposed. We have two ways to fix this problem. The first one is to decrease the exposure in the frame buffer like this. And the second way is to decrease the sun and the sky's intensity and I'm going with the second one. So let's change the exposure back to zero and open up the render settings. Now we have to go to the elements tab and add one C shading light mix element and two light select elements. Alright, let's use this one for the environment light. Now we need to enable this option over here and choose one of the environment lights that we have. But right now, we can find only one since we've only added one so far which is the Corona Sky. Later on on this video, I'll teach you how to add multiple environment lights. So make sure to watch the whole video. As for the second one, let's name it Sun. Then I need to select the Corona Sun and add it to this element by clicking on this plus button over here. Okay, now we can run the interactive rendering again. Alright, the result is still the same, but if you select the light mix tab, you can find the elements that we've added into the elements right here with the names that we've chosen for them. And you're able to easily change their intensity. So let's turn all of them off and adjust their intensity separately. Okay, let's turn on environment and decrease its intensity to something like this. Okay, it looks good. Now, let's do the same thing for the sun. Okay, it looks good. Once I'm finished with these adjustments, I have to bake all of these values into the scene. By doing this, you can balance the intensity of all of your lights and prevent any unwanted noise in your scene. As you can see, the sun's intensity is 1, but we've decreased it down to 0.04. So if I bake this value into the scene, the sun's intensity has to change to 0.04. Okay, let's do it. Right there. And I'm going to show you that the same thing happened to the corona sky as well. Here, as you can see, it's plugged to a color correction node now and the exposure is minus 3.6. Okay, let's continue. I'm just gonna find a better position for the sun to make the lighting a bit more interesting. Let's try to get some sunlight on the street, this car and probably some shadows from this tree over here. Ok, 
okay it looks good uh, we also have some sunlight on this tree over here which makes it more interesting also just so you know you can have different moods only by moving the sun up and down on the z-axis for example if i want to have a sunset i can simply move the sun down to here and the color and intensity of the light will change accordingly Alright, let's move it back to where it was and continue with the dusk mode. Okay, it looks fine. One more thing that I can tell you about is the shadows. If you take a look at these shadows, you'll find out that they're pretty sharp. Uh, in order to make them a bit softer, we need to increase the sun's size. For example, if I increase it up to 10, you'll see that the shadows are getting much softer but in this case I'm going with something like 3 okay it looks perfect if you're wondering about this motion blur effect what I did is I just simply animated this car so if I move this slider you'll see that the car is moving also that guy over there is animated as well then I just enabled the motion blur in the camera settings and that is all I'm also using the depth of field effect and if I open up the frame buffer you can see it over here. Its strength is also adjustable with the f-stop option in the camera settings. If you guys are interested in these effects uh, you can let me know in the comment section and I'll make another video about this in the near future. Anyways we're done with the daylight and I guess that was pretty easy. Now we can continue with the dusk mode. So, let's open up the material editor and create a corona bitmap. I'm going to use this HDR image which you can find on the PG Skies website. I'll put the link into the description if you want to purchase it. Now let's create a corona color correct node and plug the HDRI into this node so we could be able to change its color, intensity and other stuff. So, now that we have two environment lights, the corona sky and this HDRI image, and in order to use both of them at the same time, we have to use the multiple maps option. Uh, so let's open up the render settings, go to the scene tab, and then we have to enable the multiple maps under the scene environment rollout. Now from here, we're able to use as many environment lights as we want. For example, you can have three different HDR images to have three different moods. Anyways, I have two environment maps and I'm going to instance the Corona Sky into the first one and the HDRI map into the second one. Now we need to add another light select element into our elements and use it for the HDRI map. Okay, if you can remember, the last time we had only one option here, which was the Corona Sky. But now we have two of them. The first one is the Corona Sky and the second one is the HDRI. So let's select the second one and then we can start the interactive rendering to see the result. Alright, let's turn off the sun and the sky and adjust the HDRI light's intensity. As you can see the intensity is too high so let's uh, decrease it to something like this. We can also rotate the HDRI image to see if it works better in other angles. You can see that we have some of these clouds in the sky which is nice but let's try other angles also I guess 90 degrees was our best option now if you want you can change its color also I guess I can add a little bit of uh, more bluish tint to it
okay it looks great uh, and once again when I'm done with these adjustments I'm going to bake these values into the scene As you can see, now we have the Corona Sky, Corona Sun, and the HDRI light into the scene all together. Okay, now it's time to add some artificial lights into the scene. We can add some lights into the balconies, inside the apartment, and we can also light up the street lamps. Alright, let's start with the balconies. I'm going to randomly light up some of them, so it looks natural. Let's go to the top view and create a corona disk light below one of the balconies halogen lamps and we can randomly instance it for some of the other balconies also. Okay, we don't need to see the light source and we don't want to get any reflections from them and basically we can disable all of these options. Once again, let's start the interactive rendering to see the result. I guess we can add an IS file for these lights, so let's click here and go to this address and you can pick this one which comes with the corner renderer and it's totally free let's increase their intensity for a bit and it looks nice okay uh, we can also change the color you can make it cooler or warmer but for this one I'm going to leave it white so I could change it later if necessary Let's just increase the intensity for a little bit more and once we're done, we can bake the adjustments into the scene. Now let's add some lights inside the building and since the whole process will be the same, I'm just going to speed up the video for this part.
Okay, I've added all the new lights into a new element. But before I start rendering, I just need to exclude all the curtains from the overhead material. In order to do that, first I need to select all the curtains. Then I need to open up the render settings and I can exclude all of them by clicking on this plus button over here. Now I can start the interactive rendering to see the result. They look okay, but we can still increase the intensity a tiny bit and maybe we could make them a bit warmer also. Now that you know the whole process, I'm going to speed up the video and I'm going to add some other artificial lights into the scene. But if you had any problems or questions, you can always share them with me in the comment section and I get back to you as soon as I can.
Alright guys, the lighting process has been done. I'm going to render these shots and we'll do some post-production on them when they're finished. As I said, if you have any questions about what I've done so far, you can ask them in the comment section and I'll answer you as soon as I can. Okay, the rendering has finished and this is the first shot without any adjustments. I haven't changed anything yet and we're going to extract two different moods out of this render. So let's start with the daylight. What we're going to do is to turn off all the lights and adjust them one by one. For the daylight, we don't need anything other than the environment light and the sunlight. So let's turn on the environment light and see the result. The intensity and color looks fine, so we can just move on and turn on the sunlight. Let's increase its intensity to get a better result. Okay, it looks fine. Now let's go to the post tab and play with these options that we have here to see how we can make it look better. Alright, let's increase the highlight compress up to 1.5. We need a little bit of more contrast also. Alright, it looks good, but let's add a little bit of vignette effect also. And as for the last step, let's use one of the LUT files that we have. Okay, this one looks fine, but I'm going to decrease its opacity by half. Everything looks okay, now we can do some post-production in Photoshop. In order to do that, first we need to copy this image from here. Then we need to create a new document in Photoshop by pressing Ctrl and N, and then we can paste the image by pressing Ctrl and V. Alright, in order to change the sky, we're going to need the alpha map. So let's get back to the Corona image editor and select the alpha map from here. Now we can copy this image to the clipboard by clicking on this button and we can go back to the Photoshop. We're gonna need to go to the channel tab, create a new channel and paste the alpha map into this channel by pressing Ctrl and V. Then we need to enable the RGB channel, hold the Ctrl key and click on the alpha map. This way, we're gonna be able to select everything in the image except the sky. Now we need to press Ctrl and J to make a new layer from the selection. Okay, now we can import our sky into this document. Let's make it bigger to cover the whole area and we need to move it below this layer. Now I need to make it brighter to match with the whole image. In order to do that, I can add a curves adjustment layer on top of it and make it brighter by pushing the midtones up like this. Now we can make a new layer out of all the visible layers that we have by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E together. Now let's use the camera raw filter, which in my opinion is the most useful filter that we have. Alright, first of all, let's work on the color of the trees. So let's go to the HDS adjustments tab. And from now on, everything depends on your image and your artistic touch. In this case, I'm going to give a little bit of an orangish tint to the green colors. Let's just decrease the green saturation also something like this okay it looks good and now let's make the yellows a bit brighter okay here is before and here is after you can see that it made a huge difference already now let's go to the basic tab and work with these sliders to make uh, the image a bit more interesting i cannot tell you what you exactly have to do because uh, it would be different based on each render so you just need to give them a try and find out which adjustments are working the best for you.
Okay, I guess this render looks good. So what we have to do is to repeat the whole process uh, for the dusk shot also. I'm going to speed up the video for a bit, but if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.
Once again, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my future tutorials. Stay safe and see you next time.